prayers from God our Heavenly Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, today the sermon text is from the gospel reading, not, not the whole gospel reading. I think we could find at least three different sermons in that reading, but right in the middle of the reading I'd like to focus our attention. And so verses 3 down through 6, we hear these words of our Lord. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. This is our text. What is Jesus trying to say? What is he talking about? Do you understand? Now, the children's message was touched upon this. We might say that this is kind of an expansion on the children's message, but it, it seems strange, doesn't it, that the disciples are asking the Lord for help, increase our faith, and and we know that Jesus wants to increase our faith. We know that from his word, that he wants to strengthen us. He says, knock and the door will be opened and, and God will give us help and strengthen us and, and give us his spirit. But here he doesn't say that. He, he says something really strange. He says, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, there's probably a mulberry tree right there in view, you would say to this tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Now in Mark 4, 31, Jesus says that the mustard seed is the smallest of all the seeds. And now he says this small faith can move a mulberry tree, and they grow between 30 and 50 feet, and their roots are deep and strong, and you can command it to be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. That doesn't really make a lot of sense, does it? It's hard for us to understand that. We who live in 2019, in a world that just seems to be going crazy, we're like those disciples. We need more faith too. And don't we come to church so that our faith can be increased? Of course we do. So what is Jesus doing here? You know, we, as I mentioned earlier in the Old Testament reading. Did you catch that, how familiar it sounds, the violence and the trouble we have? We have violence in every broadcast in the news. Maybe you heard about, sadly, about the pastor last week who was um, killed, a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod pastor. It was in Fort Dodge, Iowa. He was going to confirmation class, and he was attacked outside the church and robbed, and they beat him, and he died. It, you know, it's just a, a difficult thing to even comprehend that this would happen. And so here we're living in a world that's just not a very safe place. And we're bombarded by temptations on every side. All of us face those temptations. Maybe it's materialism, maybe it's pleasure, maybe lust, maybe greed, maybe something else. And we need more faith to handle all of these fears and these pressures and these temptations, don't we? And so it's hard for us to understand a little bit what Jesus is saying. The world seems to be getting worse. And God talked about that in his word. Listen to what he says in the last two chapters of Timothy, 2 Timothy, where he says this, But understand this, that in the last days there will become times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but de de denying its, pro its power. It sounds like today, doesn't it? So this is the kind of world we live in. And don't we, with those disciples, cry out to the Lord, increase our faith? Because they were being told by the Lord to do something that they saw was very difficult. If your brother sins against you seven times a day and asks you 
and turns to you and says, I repent, you are to forgive him. Every time. That was hard for them. Actually, it's hard for us too. And we know that Jesus didn't just mean seven times. He meant seven times 70. In other words, you just keep on doing it. You continue to forgive no matter how many times. And we get to the end of our power and we say, that's enough. But Jesus says, you must forgive. Have you noticed that sometimes Jesus tells us to do something that seems to be impossible? Actually, it is impossible. He tells us that we are to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And if we're honest about it, it is impossible. We can't do it. We look at the Ten Commandments. We think we're doing pretty well to keep the outward commandments, but yet the Lord is not satisfied with just the outward obedience. He wants the obedience to be from the heart. And we catch ourselves not obeying God's word. But maybe if we had just more faith, then we could do it. Maybe if we had more faith, we'd be more obedient. If we had more faith, we would produce more good works. If we had more faith, we would really make God happy. Yes, this teaching of Jesus is difficult for us in our modern ears. Because we have learned in our modern world to focus on the wrong thing. And here's an important point of this message. When it comes to faith, we always focus on ourselves. We look inside of us and we ask ourselves, how's it going? Do I have enough faith? Is my faith strong enough to resist the temptations and overcome the sin? Is my faith solid and genuine so that I can endure until the end? Is my faith big enough to stand up to all the trials that come? And we ask those questions, and we look in ourselves, and we wonder if we have enough faith, and we realize that we don't, because we keep sinning over and over again. Jesus, in his word to his disciples today, is telling us that it's not a matter of how big our faith is, and that's what the children heard this morning. Not about how the, the quantity of our faith. It's not a matter of focusing on how big our faith is or the increasing of our faith. Jesus is helping us to stop fixing on ourselves, but he wants to, us to focus on the source of our faith. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, Hebrews chapter 12 tells us. You know the next words? The author and perfecter of our faith. He's the one that establishes faith for us in the first place. He's the one who perfects our faith. So let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He endured the suffering on the cross because of the joy of bringing salvation to us. It says that he despised the shame. He didn't care about the shame he would go through. And it was the worst shame that could ever be imagined as he took upon the sins of everybody. And all of the guilt and shame that we have because of our sins became his own. And he despised that. He went through it so that he could bring us salvation. So that he could give us someone to look to in faith. And it says in that, I'll read it again, then the last verse, verse here. It says, let, our, let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. That's where he is now. He has all power and authority in heaven and on earth. That's what that means. He is there, and he is in charge. He told us about that in the Old Testament reading. He says, I will come. I will do it. Be patient. Trust me. Even if your faith is that small, the power is not in you, but it's in me, and I will do it. There was a woman in a community who was known for her simple faith and great calm in the face of trials in this life. And Another woman heard about her, and she 
went over to visit her one day thinking that I want to find out what, what is the secret behind this woman's calm life and this peaceful life that she has. And so she came to her and she said, so you're the woman I've been hearing about, the woman with the great faith. And you know what she said? She said, no, I'm not the woman with great faith. I'm the woman with little faith in a great God. That's what Jesus is teaching us. We may have little faith, but our little faith is in a great God who has the power to do all things. With us, it's impossible. With God, all things are possible. He is able to uproot that mulberry tree and plant it in the sea. And of course, that's a picture for us to keep in mind, to remember. Because you see, that faith that he works in our hearts, as small as it might be, enables us to do what we could not do ourselves, to uproot those roots of bitterness and anger toward others who've sinned against us. And those roots go down deep sometimes, and they are strong, and we can't break them, but the Lord can. And he helps us to do it with the faith that he puts in our hearts. Today, of course, is LWML Sunday, and, and we're reminded about the encouragement that we receive from fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And so we encourage one another when we gather together in this place. We have been encouraged already today. We heard the essays from the confirmands. We've heard the music sung by the choir and the soloist to encourage us in our faith. We heard the children's message, and we're encouraged by the 22 or 23 children that came up to hear God's word. And we're encouraged by one another as we see each other week after week, as we struggle with similar problems, as we look to the same Lord to help us. And we're thankful for the body of Christ. And today we're especially thankful for the Lutheran Women's Missionary League who hang in there and grow in their faith and share the faith and work often behind the scenes to make sure things are prepared and done well. And they gather those little coins together so that mission projects can carry on throughout the world. And so today, as we encourage one another, as we are encouraged in our faith by the Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us this great promise I'm going to read for you, we don't have it in the bulletin today, but I'm going to read for you the LWML pledge. I think it's appropriate for all of us to consider as a pledge that we can make as God's children. And so in closing, I'd like to read that, that pledge. In fervent gratitude for the, the Savior's dying love and his blood-bought gift of redemption, we dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have. In the obedience to his call for workers in the harvest fields, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errands, our voice to sing his praises, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the lost and the erring into eternal fellowship with him. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.